Henry David Thoreau once said, it takes two to speak the truth, one to speak and another to hear. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Christian Questions Talk Radio with a Purpose with Jonathan and Rick. The objective of our program is to discuss with you, our listeners, thought-provoking and meaningful topics based on the Bible. It's a call-in format. We're caller-friendly, and we look forward to hearing from you. And for those of you who may be listening for the first time, our perspective is this. We believe that there is one God, and through him, there is one truth which is found in the Bible. Our purpose is to stir your thinking up along with ours as we continually search for clarity and understanding this one truth. While we are not here to teach, we are here to seriously provoke your thinking, according to Hebrews 10.24, which is the theme for our program. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. This provoking is encouraged by Isaiah 1.18. Come now and let us reason together. And we look to frame our comments in the context of 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 19 and 21. Quench not the Spirit, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And the only end result we seek to accomplish is to bring praise, honor, and glory to God our Father and Jesus our Lord. And if you'd like to contact us or suggest a topic for a future program and receive a Christian Questions travel mug, here's what you do. You write us at Christian Questions, P.O. Box 1837, New London, Connecticut, 06320, or check us out on the web at www.christianquestions.net. Today is June 22nd, 2008. All audio and printed material are copyrighted and are the property of Christian Questions. And finally, if you do have a Christian question or you want to reopen a topic we've already discussed, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So on behalf of Jonathan, my co-host... Good morning, Rick. Good morning. And Fred, the man behind the board. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? We want to welcome you to this hour of our program. Hey, Rick, you sound a little far away. Where are you? I am. I'm far away. You know, a lot of people tell me that on a normal, regular basis. <laughs> but, uh, actually, uh, my wife and I are up in Rockland, Maine. We're up here on some family matters, and so we're here for the weekend, so I'm calling in. Very good. So where were we last week, sir? Well, last week, our question was, how can we show our thanks? And that was our 10-year anniversary program, so that was a whole lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was. And listening to those old clips. Yeah, it sort of sends shivers up your spine a little bit, but yeah. it was a lot of fun nevertheless. So uh, we were glad to have that opportunity last week. But, Jonathan, this week it's back down to business. That's right. Rick, our question this morning is, do you recognize his voice? And our theme text is found in John chapter 10, verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. Well, that doesn't sound very good. And, Jonathan, following Jesus is not an easy task. At the very beginning of Christianity, it wasn't easy, and now, 2,000 years later, it remains difficult. And Jesus explained this. And much, much of his explanation came by way of parables, stories that he told that would help his true followers to understand and grasp the monumental task before them, while not making it very plain to others. This morning we're going to look at one of these parables and try and understand the import of the message. Now the message, Jesus is the shepherd. If we, if we are his sheep, need to learn his voice and follow only his lead. So folks, stay with us this morning as we ask the simple yet piercing question, do we recognize his voice? Well, Rick, we have two questions for consideration this morning. The first, why did Jesus speak this particular parable? And secondly, what was this parable meant to teach? So it's pretty simple. We're going to be focusing on the parable, but not yet. (laughs) Okay, the first thing, Jonathan, we just want to review, because we haven't discussed a parable in a number of months, is why parables? Why did Jesus speak in stories? Why not speak plainly? Why don't we read Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15? Go ahead. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? See, didn't we just ask that? (laughs) He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. 
But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. And they have shut their eyes, so they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. All right, now, Jonathan, this almost sounds harsh on the part of Jesus, doesn't it? It does, it does. I mean, because in verse 12 he says, For to those who have, more will be given, with the, um, and, and they will have an abundance, and, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And say, wait a minute. How can you take away nothing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It just doesn't sound fair. But see, there's an, there's, an important, there's an important lesson here, and that is that there is a calling going on. Incidentally, it, it, in that Matthew scripture, he's quoting from Isaiah 6, 8 through 10. We don't, we don't really need to read it because you just quoted it. But he is quoting an Old Testament prophecy, and he's applying that prophecy to his ministry. Mm-hmm. He's saying this prophecy is being fulfilled now. This is why I'm speaking in parables, because essentially it has been laid out that this is the way the communication should happen. Now, <coughs> excuse me, in the context of this particular parable in Matthew, it was the context of the parable of the seed. Now, one interesting thing in the parable, when he explains the parable, and read Matthew thirteen nineteen. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. Now, see, that verifies exactly what the explanation was why Jesus speaks in parables, doesn't it? It does. Because it says, remember, he said when he's giving the explanation, because he said the parable, and they're going, what are you talking about? I mean, I'm obviously paraphrasing, but, but you know, they're saying, what are you talking about? How come you're speaking, you're not making a point? And his answer is, everyone's not supposed to understand. Some 